so this is the one, two, three, fourth teapot of the week, the third red teapot. Um, there we go. Uh, and the only teapot that we painted in oil this week. So Jackie, you're using acrylic and I just want you to know it's pretty much the same, but I want you to, you have a little bit more flexibility in your underpainting because yeah. your painting is gonna dry and it doesn't really matter what you put on the base. Yeah. Um, so uh, just, just know that like when I'm talking about a medium like Gamsol, you will be using water. All right. Okay. So uh, we'll spend the first, and then Sandra and uh, Sandra and Sandra. I'm assuming you're doing a parrot or parakeet. parakeet? Yes. Yeah. I'm doing the the face, the Macau's face. Oh yeah, the Macau's face. Right. And Diana is working on fruit flowers. I don't know. Okay. Yes. She's looking. She's looking for inspiration. Um, so one of the things uh, that we have learned throughout the week with teapots is that. Um, when people try to guess where these elements are without measuring, they always get it in the wrong places. <laughs> always. Every single time. So to kind of avoid that, we will divide this teacup, uh, this teapot as we draw it into three parts. We're going to draw it, we're going to divide it into this middle body. And we're going to divide that. We're going to draw this middle body first, and we're going to do it the way we always do it, which is defining our vertical and using our vertical to define our horizontal. And then we're going to use the vertical to help us define how far out these two pieces go and kind of where they're located on the teapot. Um, so much better, a little bit more tedious at the beginning. Um, so, we'll start as usual with a vertical down the middle, kind of the middle. And through the middle. And then I'm going to find the halfway point. Actually, maybe I should do that on here. I know this is a little bit on the light side. Looks like my computer kind of conked out. Oops. Natalia, if you remember the steps, you can kind of go ahead with your drawing, but I really do want to see your measurements. Please do not draw these things before I see your body, right? The main body okay. of the teapot. Just don't do it. Don't even try. I'm going to tell okay. you right now, you'll get it wrong. Not you personally, the universal you. So the halfway point is I'm going to guess, yep, about here. Notice I'm measuring um, Yeah, here's halfway. It's a little higher than halfway down the body, right? Because we're including the lid of the teapot. That's helpful. It helps to kind of know where things are on your canvas. And then of course I'm going to divide this line into. So just watch while I do this. Interesting. Quarter points. Two, three, four. Right. And then we can draw a halfway point line across the middle. Is kumquat boring enough for you? I love kumquats myself. They're my face. That's what I'm going to paint then. Okay. Excellent. Make my mouth work. One, two, right. So um, there's a couple of things that are helpful to note just right off the bat. Number one is um, we can see that the lid starts at about the quarter point. We're gonna find a couple of ways to line up the lid. We can also see that the top of the spout 
And for the most part, the top of the handle start at the quarter point too. That's gonna to be helpful later on. Um, but so for the moment, the first thing you're gonna do is take a pencil. I'll send a note here for a second. And draw a straight line down the middle. It doesn't have to be the same size as this. It can be smaller, it can be bigger. Um, leave some room on each side for your handle and your step. You'll need a little bit of room. So that's the real big challenge. Oh yes, and the last thing I wanna do is I wanna check and see the width at the halfway point. I can see it comes, the width at the halfway point is about, it's about here. It's literally three quarters and one half of three quarters. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to divide this in half. You can do the same. You can divide each half in half. One, two, one. Notice how I'm checking to see are my quarters the same size. That really tells me I've got things at the right place. And then when I'm trying to figure out how, how wide to make this center line, I know that it comes up to the halfway point of this last half. So I'm just gonna mark that out. And then I can check it like this. One, two, one. Looks like it's a little bit wider. Nah, pretty much the same. It's a tip wider on this side, but mostly it's like kind of divided in half. All right, so let me put this here. I don't know if you see what I'm doing here exactly. I'm like marking, I'm taking the pencil and the top is at the top point of where I wanna measure. And my finger is at the bottom point. So then I lay it here. Wow, that wasn't very accurate. <laughs> Let me do that again. Um, my finger, actually that was accurate. What am I talking about? So to mark that, I kind of line this up and I place my finger where I wanna take the mark and I use my pencil. Then I line it up here with my finger. I draw this line. And then I check it. Uh, a little bit too wide. Here we go. Actually, I'm going to bring it in on this side. Out here. Here we go. So let me see that. Jackie, I'd like you to, I'd like to see that grid. I'd like to see your grid. Here, I'm gonna take a picture both of this. And of this. Now, I kind of wanna make something clear here, which is that I'm writing this stuff down. Wait, you're gonna to get to the point where you're able to kind of measure on your own by looking. I'm writing this stuff down so that you can see these relationships. Let's see. Okay, just checking that. Yeah, looks good to me. Awesome. Sheet. Dahlia. One, two, three. She's been through this, she knows. <laughs> You're making the same, almost the exact same marks as me. Yep, perfect. So when we come out here, I want you to sort of observe the trajectory 
of this curve. This is not just This isn't like just a curved line. It actually kind of goes out in shapes. Let me see. So I like to start from the bottom here. Remember that the bottom always sits kind of flat and then it comes out, turns up, goes in like that, right? It kind of comes out a little bit. This particular teapot, they don't all do that, but this one is kind of, kind of squat. And then this side, so one of the things I know is that my lid is at the quarter point. And if I want to know where my lid stops, I just figured this out on Friday. <laughs> I can draw two little lines here maybe here. This one's slightly longer than this one, not too much. In from the center, right? And then I can check and see that my lid between those two comes up to about here. So let's, I want it to come up to about here. Perfect. So get to there. And here, let me take a picture of this so you guys can see it. Also. So what this means is as your, here we go. As you're kind of going through and sketching this, right, you're checking every measurement against your verticals. And that may seem tedious at first, but you're going to get used to that. So send it in. You feel like you've got the shape. Let's see. Good job, Jackie. Let's see. I think this is a little bit wide, Jackie. Can you bring it to the right in here on this side? And a the little vertical, bit to the left. vertical lines? The vertical lines. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay. 
right? Then of course, you can, uh, you can kind of fill in these edges here, right? And, sorry, the halfway point is here. It looks like the lid is about here. It's got a simpler lid than a lot of the lids we've done this week. The drawing always looks so funny at this point. It's like a little, this one looks like a cat from behind. Oh, speaking of which, let me go check on my little beastie. Oh, there he is. It's really sunny here. I don't know where, what it's like where you guys are. Oh, oh it's snowing it's here. Very hot. Snowing it's and hot. 90. It's Is 90? It 90? Yeah. Oh. Wow. It's like 60 here. It's weird. And super sunny, it hasn't rained in about a week, which is weird this time of year. It's gray and snowy, but not in a nice way. It's, um, it's just kind of around murky. Just, because it's not settling, you know, so right. it's just wet on the ground. But it's, right, right. It's enough to dissuade the cats from being outside. <laughs> good. <laughs> There's got to be something good about it. Yes. It pretty happy. Just sitting there. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> All right. Natalia looks pretty good. Yep, looks good to me. Okay, get your tops on. And then we're going to talk about Let's talk about, I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see it. So now that we have established these distances and we have these points, which we know are good points, what I like to do when I'm either like, so if I am here, I'm going to put my, um, I'm going to add my spotlight so you guys can see what I'm doing. So when I'm actually just looking at this teapot, if I didn't have a piece of paper to actually write on, I'd be holding my arm like this and checking where does the top of the teapot line up? Sorry, where does the top of the spout line up with the teacup? What I can see is that it lines up about here, right? So that's my first hint. It tells me kind of how high up my spout needs to go, right? And then the other thing I like to figure out is how far out does my spout go? And this is the farthest point, right? It comes out to here. Um, so when I, and then I can come to the bottom of the spout, which, which handily happens to match with my halfway point, right? So I can just draw a straight line down and over. And then here I have a nice little box upon which my spout is contained. And I can, if I want to, sort of sketch in the negative shapes, right? Or I can sketch this by hand, kind of depending on how I see that. So when I'm coming here, 
like the let's do this. <laughs> the only problem with these boards is that they're a little bit difficult to move. Whoa. Come on, you. There we go. Okay. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of locate right here, which is sort of right where the top turns around and starts moving up, is where my where I start to line this up. And then I can come here and I can check this measurement against this one to see how far out to go. I can see it goes out to about up to about here. So I can come over here on my drawing, sketch in this little shape, this little mark, and I can come here. And then I know my teapot doesn't go out any farther than this. So it kind of lines up here and it starts here. And then I know that my spout ends right at my halfway point. So I can just draw that out and have it meet in a little box. Oh, yeah, yes. I got confused by my marks there for a second. So here, hold on, move this. And you can do the same thing with the back edge. Let's go move this over here a little bit. We can do the same thing with the back edge, right? So once again, here, I can check and see. It looks like this line. Well, we can see where it lines up. It's like right there. I can see it goes past the top edge of the handle to here, right? This is the farthest out it goes, the widest it goes. And then it goes all the way down. to here, past, here we go. You can see that the top line kind of lines up, the top part of the bottom of the handle lines up with the three quarter point. The bottom lines up about a little bit less than halfway down. So I can come here, right, have that here. I can come here and check this. Just the same place, it's a little bit slightly lower. I can come here and check this length. Uh, the handle comes out a little bit, but it actually comes exactly halfway out. It's just a little bit farther than the spout. down here and then about here just below the three-quarter point that's where the handle stops so once again i have this box and so when i'm sketching black when i'm sketching this guy i can come in I can use my negative space, right? So this shape is as important as this shape. See that that is here. Right. There's my spout. I know my spout is kind of generally in the right spot. And then I can come over here and kind of do that same thing. I'm really starting with my negative spaces. This is like kind of a straight down thing. And even things like where the teapot turns, right where the handle turns, I can kind of line that up with where my quarter points are and my halfway points are.
Notice I'm not trying to do this all at once, and I'm not trying to draw this as a single curved line. It's really like a series of straight lines that intersect with each other. Boom. Then I have, oh, I see. Can't really exactly see it. So then I have my two places in kind of the shapes they need to be. Now I can come back and I can look at it. I can sort of tweak it a little bit. But I basically have things in the right places. Kind of amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I know, Natalia, this is the second time for you. Believe me, it's like my fifth. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm like, oh my God, it just totally works. It helps you get things in the right place. So I don't expect you, when you're drawing from paper, from a photograph, of course you can do this kind of marking up. Eventually you're going to get to the point where you can do it with anything. You can do it with three-dimensional things, but this is the thinking. So it's more about Sometimes I worry people get too caught up in the grid and then they're like, what is this measurement? And what is this measurement? And those are important, but it's more important to understand how space kind of plays out, how much space each part of a subject plays out on a flat surface. It's different. It's different than how it plays out in a, uh, in a whatchamacallit, in a, uh, on a, in a three-dimensional, setting right there's a translation that happens and then we've got our little cast shadow right here so you can lay that in there let me send a picture of this so jackie this is what we've been working on all week it's been really fun we yeah, did I, I missed you yesterday because i had to give a webinar at the same uh -huh. time but the, 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 I would recommend going to the, um, the video, uh, to the video, because it was yep. a pretty good one. Is it up? Yeah, it's all up. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. So you can see it. There we go. Oops. I come what looks like a plum. <laughs> Did you send it over? No, no. Okay. I can uh, send it. I haven't over. seen it. You don't have to. I just like Natalia looks pretty good to me. Yep. 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 So go ahead, Natalia. Start like putting in. I'm going to give you this because the photo, the black and white photocopy isn't too good. So I'm gonna give you, by the way, which direction is the light primarily coming from? Can you tell? Natalia, which direction is it coming from? Uh, I would say the lightest part suggests from the left, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously there's light coming from more than one area, but mm -hmm. if you look at like the reflection here and you compare it to the lighter reflection here, which one's lighter? This one, Yeah. right? Also cast shadow is going out this way. That's like kind of the main way you can tell. Oh, he's a cutie. I don't know, Diana, I like it just like that. I mean, keep going, don't get me wrong. I will keep. So, what's that? Yeah, I will keep going. 
Yeah. So kind of the darkest parts are going to be, well, the dark side is really here. And then there's some dark parts here. It's darker on this side, right? Darker here. Lighter here. Lighter up here. Darker there. Then of course there's this thing. But really pretty much with a few reflected light examples accepted, you can see that everything on this side is a little bit darker. So you can go ahead and add in some of those shapes that you see, including these reflected shapes. And you can also, if you want to get rid of these, Right, your extra guidelines, because once you've got those down, you don't need them anymore. Can you, can you see if I have mine down before I erase anything? Yeah, absolutely. Great, I want to see that. Good job, Jackie. Good job. Proving once again that if you're, uh, you can make this a little bit bigger, wider. Oh, okay. Right. Proving once again, right, that listening is as important as anything else in drawing, right? It's not charging ahead thinking you know what you're doing. It's actually helpful just to kind of listen. You're a good listener, Jack, and you follow direction well. Oh, thank you. It's a, it's a, as you probably noticed, it's not like something, it's not easy for everybody. That's not a commentary on anybody here today. By the way. Of course not. For listeners. <laughs> but you notice when people are having problems, it is very often a listening problem that they're having, <laughs> as well as a, well, some, sometimes we just ignore what you say. Right. Well, isn't that the same as not listening? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're listening, but you don't care. <laughs> we care. Yeah. But like, notice when one has trouble, that's really when often people are having the problem, They're just having a struggle and to hear what is the, what is the actual thing being said? By the way, I'm not getting every, um, I'm not getting every reflection. I'm only getting the big ones. I can kind of, does this exercise has really proven that you don't need to get everyone for it to work? I'm trying to figure out what follows naturally from teapots. Maybe a vase of flowers. Oh. I know, if I, if people find that boring. But until everybody's got their rounded objects, there's a lot of like inanimate objects that helps to practice it. Maybe we'll do an apple or something. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll think about it this way. But we would be painting both the vase and the flowers. Yes, that would be the idea. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm in them. <laughs> I need some. <laughs> it's a little bit harder, right? Yeah. I really enjoyed the lesson we had uh, with flowers. Uh, the, the pastel one. Yes. 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 Yeah. Me too. Great. That was one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> I should take more pictures now because now is the time when the fruit it's fruiting but it's also flowering oh nice oh so all the it smells so fantastic in the garden now. I cannot even imagine how incredible <laughs> it must all be. All the citrus trees <laughs> are flowering. Oh my God, I can totally imagine it. See, this is why our gathering, this is why we all have to gather in LA in the winter. Yeah. Because your winter is not the same as our winter. And actually, summer is now more and more kind of engulfed by fire, right? <laughs> so you guys will come to us. Yeah, I mean, there is no fire season anymore. There is fire season. There's just fire. Yeah, it's, it's scary. It is really scary. Yeah. It feels like doing, this feels like doing like a, a pattern for a fabric or something. Uh, is it because you've got such a kind of close up happening? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember um, I had a teacher once, a pastel teacher. She yeah. told me that my work, when it looked up close, she's like, it's like one of those colorful Ukrainian scarves. And I know it. You may, now I, I think what you're talking about is a little bit like that. It's like a kind yeah. of a pattern, like one yeah. of those simplified, which is a really cool thing to replicate in my mind. Um, it's fun, isn't it? To sort of play with uh, perspective, ideas. Like Diana, yeah. you could probably just paint your garden all year round if you didn't get bored with it, right? You can find yeah. all different ways to yeah. photograph it, views of it, but close-ups far away. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I've been working on my um, fern series. Uh, and I just have no end of ideas about how to do it. Even though they have a kind of similar look, I can totally say that they, um, that like, I just keep coming up with different ways of trying to use the similar mark making and composition. It's like not boring at all. I thought it would be boring. Normally I'm pretty bored, but I'm like 10, 12 paintings in, I'm like, oh my God, there's just more ideas. So it's interesting when you can find a subject which has like a lot of, it's very fruitful, like yeah. yours. Yeah, my so when you think your drawing is done, go ahead and send it to me and then we will talk about painting. Yeah, Natalia, there you go. Okay. All right. Uh, Jackie, do you want a minute? Well, I can show you where I am. Okay, take a picture. Shoot. <laughs> Diana. <laughs> 
like, what happened? <laughs> well, my picture of a Macau, I printed the wrong one and I drew the wrong one. There's oh, that wasn't fun. Diana. It was Sandra. Sorry, yeah. I got you two mixed up. Diana, yeah. quietly. Sorry, didn't mean to like cast aspersions, Diana. <laughs> so look, yeah. this is the one I drew. Uh-huh. But then I found in my pictures this, I think this one, which I think is much better. Well, it's got nice light. Try them both. Just do them both. Do them both. Do them both. Okay, I might as well. Oh, might so as well. well. We're here for three hours. You can get a lot no, of no, work I done in three hours. Both in three hours, but. Right, but we can get a lot of work done. Do it, start it. Anyway, um, give me one second, you guys. I'm gonna check on my little boy out there. Sandra, you, you've been painting too much with me. You're saying shit. But I'd say that a lot, but usually not on Zoom. Actually, it's a good picture. I think I have my pattern in place now. That's that's the start. He's such a cutie. All right, let's see. Jackie, that looks great. I think you're in good shape. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, so my suggestion, <laughs> so because we're using oil today, our underpainting, we need to think about a color for our underpainting. And Jackie, I'm gonna challenge you to try a different color that I'm going to demonstrate today. This is Natalia. Uh, Natalia, I'm gonna challenge you to go with me. And I know you'll do it anyway, because this is the colors that you love. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of Gamsol, pouring it into a jar. Gamsol is like turpentine or any mineral solvent. Um, so we're gonna do a kind of loose underpainting with this. What's nice about this is that it helps the first layer. First layer looks kind of runny, but it helps it dry very quickly so that we can layer more colors on top, but it won't entirely dry because this is oil and it'll take several days. Jackie, you're, you instead of Gamsol are gonna be using water. Yep. And my suggestion is that you use a green for your base painting. Okay. Any ideas why? because it's the complementary color to red, red. Yes, yes. So there's this thing that happens, right? When like we put two colors next to each other, they pop each other forward. We know when we mix complementary colors, we get neutrals, shadows, right? We're gonna find that as we start to mix for this red teapot, the shadow colors. Um, but it's kind of similar to put a complements on top of each other as long as the layers are dry. It has a similar but more subtle um, uh, kind of uh, reaction that uh, it would if you put them next to each other. So there's a popping, but it's a more subtle pop, which is nice. Like it creates depth and people will be like, whoa, how'd you do that? How'd you mix that red? And you'll just be like, <laughs> secret, <laughs> here's the secret. Um, so, for both of you, let's see. I'm gonna suggest, Natalia, of course, that we use uh, transparent red oxide or, or burnt sienna, right? Because it's kind of warm and it will, whatever colors we add to it. Mix, let's, see, let's put these up. 
here, and then we'll talk about the actual colors. And I'm going to recommend that if you put your colors out, you should put them kind of on the top edge. Eesh. I've got a palette knife here, right, for mixing later on. Um, and so I'm going to use a pretty big brush. I'm going to use this big brush, this sort of, to do to dip my brush in my water or my dam saw, in this case my dam saw, to get a very thin layer. You can see I almost have nothing but watery paint. I have no chunks of paint on my brush. And I'm going to come in and paint the darkest parts of the painting. Look how pretty that is already. I think this is why I go to, my go-to is always burnt sienna. Look how gorgeous it is. Yeah, it is. Beautiful, right? It's like just a stunning color. So unlike watercolor, what's really great about this is that you can go darker. You can get lighter layers on top and they look really amazing. But you're not doing anything with the background right now. You're just doing We're going to do the background too. And I'm just going to do kind of a light. Oh, okay. Yeah. Washy. What I'm doing is starting with the darks so that you can see them. Right. So this is the darkest areas. And then the lighter areas, I use more water or dam salt. I just want them to read as a little bit lighter. So you see that this really like a two toned painting. If I was working in watercolor, once again, I'd need to be more probably detailed. I'd need to be more careful with my lights. But here I know I can lay all my lights very nicely on top of my dark. So it doesn't matter really how dark I go. I, technically, really, I could just do one whole um, color, just one color, just go over the whole thing with a kind of general tone. But I like to train you to sort of see the lights and darks. So here we are. So can you see it's a little bit darker on this side? Right. A little bit darker down here. That's really what I want you to do is just be kind of aware of the lights and the darks. I'm gonna take a picture of this. <laughs> it just looks, yeah, it does. It looks like a Ukrainian scarf, Diana. Good job. <laughs> yeah, at least the pattern is in place and now it's just the colors that it's need. It's pretty, right? Like it's just, yeah, the pattern is in place. Yeah. I'll take a picture of this so you guys can see this. <laughs> it's just so attractive. Blue and I orange. Have... I mean, look at what blue and I'll orange right. do, can do. They're so attractive. Are. I'm going to take a picture of this so you guys can really see this with these little sketches. I think you two are going to find this a very satisfying assignment. And Jackie, you've heard that Marie is going to stop teaching in April, right? Yeah, yeah, I was there last week. You were there last week when we discussed that. I wanted you guys to know first before I announced that formally. Yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> I know, we're it's always hard. hard. We're attached to her. Of course, I am too. It was like, at first I was like, uh. And, <laughs> but then I got excited about all the things we can do, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's like there's both old and new. And I'm so happy for her to be able to, she's just really been through a lot. She's just been through a lot. She needs, she needs a break. Yeah, she needs some Marie time. She needs some Marie time, exactly. But I get it. You get attached to your teachers, right? Because they're Ooh. teaching you a system. And yeah. the more you get into the system, the more you learn. That's part of it. But I just got new pastels for my birthday. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to keep 
pastilling. Don't worry, and don't worry, I'll hire a couple of pastel artists to do oh, cool. little short stuff, short lessons. I mean, remember, there's going to be a different lesson each month, a different teacher each month doing something different. So I have a couple of people in mind. I'm trying to confirm right now. Those of us using oil, we're not using green because I want to make sure that whatever we put on top of this, I can see that mine's not drying super quickly. It might or might not be dry when we start doing the basic painting, um, the over the over painting, the second layer. And so I want whatever I have here to be able to mix in and enhance what I've got on top. And uh, since since uh, green will obviously mute my red, and in some cases I don't want that to happen, um, we're not going to start with we're not going to start with red. But if you're working with um, acrylic, green is a great choice. It's not the only choice. There's lots of choices. Actually, I have a class idea. What's I, that? Uh, I like, I want to um, start painting on clothes like t-shirts and stuff. Ooh. So I've been checking checking some, I found a Polish uh, company, they produce some paint, paint. Uh, um, so, so, so I was thinking maybe something like that, but I don't know if you have someone. Uh, I might, let me um, ask, 
There's a couple of people who are coming to mind. I know there's a woman who does fabric art who wants to teach sort of sewing. Oh, okay. So I don't know how much she paints on clothes. So let me think about Wouldn't that. it be easier to do procreate and print it on fabric? Because then you can wash it more easily, perhaps? Yeah, I want to do, I want to do both. I mean, uh, not procreate, but um, take pictures and turn them into vector graphics, something like that. But I also admire handmade things. So right. I, it's so right. special. Like yes. when I went, yeah, when I went to Croatia, I bought a dress from a local painter. He does only one piece of each, and it has a painting of the town, and it's so unique. It's something yes. I, I just, I just feel it's something I would enjoy. So just thinking out loud here. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, let me uh, ask around. Maybe we should get the Croatian. Does he speak English? Maybe we should get the Croatian painter to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> I lived in Zagreb for a while. I met some really great painters there. In fact, my landlord was a painter, a Croatian painter. He was a wonderful man. Oh my God, I wish I had stayed there longer. I lived there a year and we were really starting to have some great parties in that. He, rent, he lived it, he rented out part his basement apartment uh, to, to this young Croatian couple, really lovely. I had the middle floor, he had the upper floor. And um, he just lived in this totally magical little spot in Zagreb. And uh, it was a magical year. Muka had a blast. It was like <laughs> her young kitten self. And he was super talented. Sounds amazing. Yeah. You guys let me know when you're done, take your time. All right, we'll throw that idea out there. I like it. So far, I've uh, I've got an acrylic painter I really like, who does beautiful work here in Portland. I'd really like to hire. Uh, my friend Lotto has proposed doing some kind of foam press printing project with kids. Could be really fun. 
um, all kinds of things are popping up, like all kinds of fun, weird, odd stuff. There's so many things to learn. I'm so excited. You know, so fun, like that's like the greatest thing about art. It just, you can't be bored because there's always something else to do, like to conquer, to learn. It's really fun. I know I don't have to tell you guys that, you know, you know. Yours almost looks like a watercolor, Leah. I know. That's the um what do you call it? The uh the turpentine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm solved. Also, this is kind of a simpler one. So let's see, is it remotely? No, it's not really drawing yet. <laughs> Where is Pat? She said she was feeling sick today. Oh. That's too bad. You know, it's hard to believe it. Pat's like 70 something. She seems very young, but she she gets to, you know, she's she'll probably hate me for saying her age. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> for hearing this. Sorry. <laughs> I love you. You look much younger when you're 70 something. Are you guys watching the Super Bowl? No. Oh, that's why it's so quiet today. It's a good time to go to the supermarket. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was wondering why it was so quiet today. I keep forgetting today is the Super Bowl. Are you watching the Super Bowl? Diana, Diana? I guess you have to. No, I don't have to, but I kind of like watching the commercials. The ads. I can watch from the next day without having to endure the game in between. Right. It's just so boring. But it's LA, so it's. Yes, I suppose so. Right, right. Hmm. Are the cats complaining? Fine. Sandra seemed to be quiet. I think that was a child. <laughs> I think that was, I think that was Megan. <laughs> I think that was Jackie. Yes. yes, we're having a Super Bowl discussion. Come and say hello, Megan. No, never Hi, mind. Megan. Yeah, Megan won't do that. She's like, no, don't make she, me do anything. She invited herself to two different Super Bowl parties and she's complaining that she has to come home and go to the other one because she was in the middle of the last one. Right. Okay, she says she didn't invite herself. She got invited. And also, right. you accepted. All right, I'm getting a lot of complaints here. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, we heard it. Yeah. What do you ask if I want this <laughs> She's hilarious. She used to take a, little, a couple of classes, so we know each other. Kids classes for a little while. And actually the other one is Brienne is down here working on her art project on the floor. She's making a piece of canvas look like an old document with tea 
Cool. Oh, that's one of my favorite things to do. So yeah. great. What is she using? Tea and coffee or? Mm -hmm. Tea, tea. She's using tea. I remember that my, in my, the one sort of one of the few painting lessons I ever had, that once I did my underpainting, I was painting on unstretched canvas. Um, my, so I did my underpainting and then my teacher had me throw it into the bathtub. <laughs> like get it all wet, give it like a what, and then pull it out and do more. So I would have all this cool texture on it. It was really cool. Here comes a galloping dog. Gallop, gallop, gallop. Were you up without me? Gallop, gallop. Were you up without me? Yes. It's still so much lumber on my on the deck that's being built, but I think I'm gonna send you just to show you how. Yes, how show us how it's, it's looking. Gonna... We'd love to see it. This is one of those lessons. Where there's is, not that but... many of us, so we can kind of just well, I mean, we do it anyway. But like, I feel like Sundays are the <gasps> stretch is, out. Is, is and just the, <laughs> is the corner of the deck. So the inner club. Yes. <laughs> oh, Diana, that looks gorgeous. Look at that. You just have to. Oh, man. It's still so much lumber there on the. Oh, it's beautiful. And that red, that sort of pinky red thing is your bougainvillea? Yeah. Oh, isn't that something? Oh, that's gorgeous. I'm just looking at, I'm I'm trying to peep and see how many trees I can see from that Oh, I love that palm shot. trees. The deck is absolutely beautiful. I know. Sandra, oh, meet you there in December. I'm moving in. Yeah. All right. With my three there. Bengals. <laughs> I meet you there in December. Oh my God. Can you imagine trying to pull the Bengals out of like trouble there? Of the dog. <laughs> he never, and just like, they just be like, off like a look, shot. this is what it looks like for now. Uh, oh, it's coming uh, along. Very coming along nice. Great. Very nice. I like it. Yeah, so I'm uh, excited about my new deck and, and my new car. Yeah. Did you get it? <laughs> Did you go get it? No, no, I'm buying it. I haven't bought it yet. It's my friend who is moving back to Sweden. It's her car. Ah, okay. A blonde in a in a in a drop top. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Super California girl there. Yeah, I used I used to have a convertible, but I know you had a red one, right? Yeah. And <laughs> of course. Of course. But you know, I shouldn't be in the sun because my medication doesn't go together with sun. So right. But short trips. Short trips. All right, you guys. I'm gonna start talking about mixing. Let's talk a little bit about mixing. Um, and then you can just kind of be off and running. Uh, so obviously we have a red. Do you think this, what do you think this uh, teapot looks like? Do you think it's a cool red or a warm red? It's very, very warm thing. I think it's kind of a combo. I think it's very cool. Uh, it's cool, but it's got a touch of warmth in it. Yeah, maybe. A touch, just a touch. All right, so this is what we're going to do. By the way, which one is the warm one? This one or this red? This is cadmium red. This is quinacridone. Jackie, you answer this question since I know everybody else here knows the answer. Warm or cool? Warm, which one's warm, which one's cool? I can't hear you, my dear. Sorry, the one on my left looks warmer, which is Yes, that one. excellent, cadmium red, good eye. Everybody's getting really good at this warm, cool thing. So this warm red, cadmium red has yellow in it to make it look almost orange. This cool red has a touch of blue. 
That's why this cool red quinacridone is a good one to mix with blue to make purple. It looks less muddy. Uh, whereas if I try to mix a cadmium red with blue to make purple, I get something that's a little bit more brown. That's because it's a little bit more like mixing. It's almost an orange, right? And we know that blue and orange are complementary colors. When we mix them together, we get shadows. Um, I'm going to say this is mostly cool, but there are some warms. And uh, here, I'm going to add a little bit of, I'm going to put a little bit of Viridian Green here. And then the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself two more colors just for playing around. One is yellow, an actual proper yellow. Oh, don't slide down there, guy. He's sliding. He's sliding. Stay there. <laughs> and a bit of white. Is he trying to get away from you? <laughs> yes, he's trying to get away. You'll never get away. And I'm giving myself a little bit of white here. So if I'm trying to mix the shadow color of um, red, I'm going to take a little bit of green and mix it in. And because this is a mostly cool green, I'm going to see how if I take this quinacridone right down here, I'm kind of putting it down here. I'm going to take a tiny little scoop of um, cadmium and mix it in. So it's kind of this cute, lovely pinky color. I can see it's a little bit bright, so you can't see it. So I'll show it to you in a second. And then I'm gonna take little, little tiny bits of green to mix in. And what I get is an absolutely gorgeous, um, almost looks like burgundy, but really it's like a shadow color. And if I wanna make my shadow lighter, right? Like this part here. I could do a couple of things. Hang on, I've got my cloth here. I could mix like a touch of yellow in, right? With a bit of the shadow, right? Then it's still shadowy. That might work out really well. I could mix a touch of white in, right? To make it a little bit lighter. Hmm. Lovely colors. That's a little pepto bismol but. Um, so I'm going to start by like making sure I have enough of my dark here to mix. And then with a clean brush and probably a slightly smaller brush, I'm still using a flat. I don't have any. I'm just using straight paint. I'm not using anything to make it wet. I'll only use my gal kid, sorry, I'll only use my Gamsol to kind of clean off my brush between layers. I'm gonna really load up. See how much paint is kind of piled up on the brush here? And then I'm gonna come in here. I'm just putting in a little bit more warm. I'm gonna come in here. I'm going to paint kind of the darkest areas going over my underpainting. So if you don't have the colors that I have, you know, quinacridone red, and notice I'm kind of going around here because I'd like to get a little bit lighter. Oops. Get a little bit sort of more orangey yellow here. Not just a little bit. Um, totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Always important. Uh, um, oh, well, I don't remember what I was going to say. I'll remember it soon. You can see I'm going over the darkest areas of my painting first. Kind of dark here, it's dark here, around there. I'm not worrying so much about details yet. It's kind of a little bit dark here. That's pretty much it. Um, I'll take a picture of this. And then because Jackie in particular, you're gonna wanna go fast, but Natalia, you probably will too. 
um, you're want you're gonna want to go fast, Jeff, because you're gonna want both these sides to be light. Here, hold on. Stop talking. Take a picture and then do. Hazen, with um, acrylic. Up to with you, especially with acrylic, huh? No, no, no. What I'm saying is with acrylic, what, no water on the dark layer. Yeah, yeah. I'm just okay. using basic paint. I'm using, uh, right now I'm dipping my brush in Gamsol and squeezing it out with my rag so I can clean it up, get all of the shadow off. And then I'm going to layer in some light here. Right. I'll take a little bit of white in my light. So this is the non-shadow stuff. I'm kind of quickly putting this over. And then I'm going to blend it in. I'm going to kind of blend it over. I could bring it as far as I want to in, kind of depending on how dramatic I want to make my shadows. Not the best, I'm not using the best brush for this because it's leaving this kind of weird roundish brush mark. I don't know if you can see that. So you can see there is a subtle shift from light to dark. In fact, I just kind of went into using cadmium as my light, even though I know this is a cooler thing because I like cadmium. <laughs> I just decided I wanted it to be redder. So, um, and then you can see here, I can kind of go in. Yeah, I'm not using any medium at all. I'm not using, see, I can kind of blend it in on top. Natalia, do you see how that's happening? Mm -hmm. You might want to use a little yellow. Wait, shoot, just blew into my here for this shadow over on this side. Jackie, you're gonna find that your lights, you're gonna be able to just wait. You can go all dark if you want to, and then lay your lights down. See how I'm kind of laying lights down in over the top, but yeah, I'm not really using any medium at all. I'm just using paint. If you want to, you could just mix straight green and burnt sienna, which you already have. Or if you don't, you don't have it, Jackie, but uh, you can get some burnt sienna, straight green, and mix like the shadow color here. And then you can do whatever you want for the background. And as things dry, Jackie, you can kind of add more detail and layers. But focus on just the kind of blending that you're going to need. And you know what, you guys, you can include Oof. this little silver thing or not. It doesn't really matter to me. I don't think it's integral. I don't think it's super important um, to the integrity of the painting that you have it. So I wouldn't complicate uh, complicate your painting with it. Oh, it looks so pretty already, right? Yeah, I like it very much. Yeah, it's uh, that's oil free. Also, since this is the fourth time I've done this this week, it just goes faster and faster every time. <laughs> so, 
So even without everything, every little piece, every little light, this is a really charming painting. You guys will be right back. Just continued animal maintenance. <laughs> Yeah. How's it going? That is a trick question. <laughs> Indeed. At least a very tricky question.
The little calico cat that I feel the stray feed the stray is outside and Muka just chased her away. Oh, what about the crow? Uh, they're in and out. They've been in and out. At one point, the stray and the crow were going for the same food. And no, they were like, no complaints. Yes, he was kind of yelling. She was like, um, okay, yeah, when she was, yeah, she's quiet. She's a quiet cat. She does not make any noise. She's probably, you know, in the wild, it's dangerous for them to be noisy. Right. That's what, that's how she behaves. And she won't really let me touch her. She's very like, but she'll gladly accept food. Yes. And she kind of like keeps her distance. So when I come close, she scoots away, but she scoots away to watch me to see what I'm doing as opposed to just running and hiding. Um, I haven't been able to get to touch her. I suppose it's better not to for her. She better, she should learn to be careful of humans. It's a bit sad. It is because they can be, you know, it's a very different life for them if they're kind of on their own. Well, it's much shorter life and much more dangerous. Yeah. Much less comfortable. Yeah. But more excitement. <laughs> I don't know if we want that kind of excitement. Hermes wants that kind of excitement. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They just think they want it. Yes, exactly. He snuck out twice in one day. Oh my God. Uh, see, I had this with Leon the other day, but I fixed the problem. Yes, I, I heard. So it's working, huh? I think so. It, it turns out that uh, I installed this um, expensive and system which seemed uh, very effective, but Leon continued to escape, and now I can see that the handyman was lazy. Huh. Was very annoying. Yeah. He just uh, underestimated. He didn't seal it. He didn't seal it properly. Exactly. In between, he left two big gaps. In between, he left big gaps in between. And cats are brilliant at finding. Oh, they can look for it. Yeah, I almost feel like they can smell it. <laughs> they just go straight to it as a Oops, beeline. An accident here. I can fix it.
Ich gehe nicht. Gesundheit. Gut. Can you believe almost two hours has gone by, you guys? Yeah. It feels like it? No, but I know. Time, yeah. Yeah. But it's so hot here, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it shouldn't be, right? I'm 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 so I'm super hot. I might have to put on the fan, but then <coughs> and the, the paint will dry. Oh. The paint's gonna dry anyway. That's so hot. Yeah. You might as well put on the fan. <laughs> yeah. Jackie, Natalia, how's it going? I mean it's going. Yeah. It's mm. the interesting thing to think about. It's like soft edges here, right? On everything in the pot, there's these soft edges until you get to these reflections, which are hard edged, and you get to the outside, of course, which is our which are hard edges. And then you can make decisions about what you want to do with your background. I'm sort of working with what I've got here. I've got some green, some yellow, some sort of pinky white. I could kind of do the easy thing, layer in sort of this light pale green. I could really do whatever I want to. It's kind of pretty. I'm just sort of taking whatever colors I have and making kind of weird goldy colors. Kind of a muted gold. I might even just keep it like that. Let my bottom be unpainted. You can do whatever you want though.
Jag ska gå ut och se hur min handyman är. 